In order to graph this absolute value equation and to identify its vertex, we should begin by finding the vertex. To find the x-coordinate of the vertex, we have to set the inside of the absolute value bars to zero, and then solve for x. Then we can plug that back into this equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So take what's inside the absolute value bars, 3x minus 13, and set it equal to zero. We then add 13 to both sides, so we have 3x equals 13, and then divide both sides by 3 to finish solving for x. So we have x equals 13 over 3. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Like I said, we'll plug that back into this equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Now, when we plug this x value in, what's inside the absolute value bars should become 0, because that's where this x value came from, was setting that expression equal to 0. And we see that in action here. So we take this equation and plug in x equals 13 thirds. So y equals the absolute value of 3 times x, but x is 13 over 3, minus 13, and plus 2. Now, this multiplication by 3 and this division by 3 cancel out. So we're just left with 13 minus 13 in the absolute value bars. And of course, that's 0. So this is the absolute value of 0 plus 2, which is just equal to 2. Then we could begin our graph. We know the coordinates of the vertex are 13 thirds, 2. And so we could plot that here. 13 over 3 is 4 and 1 third, so you can see its horizontal position is just a little bit past x equals 4. And of course, its y coordinate, as we just calculated, is 2. Now, to get a full picture of the absolute value graph, we want to plug in an x coordinate to the left of the vertex and a coordinate that's to the right of the vertex. Let's begin by plugging in x equals 3. That's to the left of the vertex. So we're going to take the equation as before, y equals all of this stuff, but we're plugging in x equals 3. So y equals the absolute value of 3 times x, but x is 3, minus 13, and plus 2. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 13 is negative 4. So inside the absolute value bars, we have negative 4, and there's a plus 2 outside. The absolute value of negative 4 is just positive 4, and positive 4 plus 2 gives us our y-coordinate of 6. So at x equals 3, y is equal to 6. And there that is on our graph. Now, let's plug in something to the right of the vertex. Let's say we plug in x equals 5. So just like before, we take this equation, but replace x with 5. So we have y equals the absolute value of 3 times x, but x is 5, minus 13, and plus 2. Now, 3 times 5 is 15, and then we're subtracting 13. So what's left inside the absolute value bars is just 2 and the absolute value of 2 is 2. So this is just 2 plus 2, and so the y-coordinate is 4. So when x equals 5, we have y equals 4, and we see that point on our graph there. Now, we just have to connect the vertex to both of these points. And the graph of an absolute value function is linear, except for that part at the vertex where it switches direction. So these segments connecting the points are just lines, but at the vertex you see they switch direction. And that is a graph of this absolute value equation, with of course our vertex in red down there at the bottom. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Algebra 1 course and Algebra 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me